Are you even switch up for me? You're on, yeah. I'm yes. good. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for breakfast. You're so very welcome. Today we're going to talk about the new CFPB and the new mortgage disclosures. So this is what's going to be happening October 3rd. Starting, You'll start seeing them with applications that are being uh, taken by lenders beginning October 3rd. It was supposed to be August 1st and they moved it and moved it again. So here we are. We don't think they're going to postpone this, the changes any longer. Please. Okay, so why are we doing this? <laughs> Who knows? So after fin the finance crisis of 2008 and 2007 and 8, um, there was a Dodd-Frank pause. <coughs> I know about some of that and they mandated some overhaul of these forms so we've seen a few of the forms with the settlement statement you know where they've changed it where they've grouped the numbers together um, but now this is supposed to be the final uh, the changes the big changes the reason they decided that they wanted to do this make it easier to shop for closing services this is theoretically understand the mortgage loans and avoid surprises at closings any questions so far? <laughs> All right. Okay. So the thought behind it also was to know before you owe. So to give consumers an opportunity to review closing documents, not be sitting at the table and having to go through the settlement statement then. You know, sometimes we'll get packages an hour after the closing starts. So this, in theory, is supposed to avoid it. We're supposed to get everything three days prior and give everybody opportunity to review documents. The, these new forms that you have or you should have are supposed to um, apply to all residential consumer loans except for the equity lines that you'll see. So a lot of, what's wrong? I didn't get all right. We didn't get any. Uh, except for equity lines. Uh -oh. Hang with you, it'll be all right. <laughs> Reverse mortgages. <laughs> mortgages secured by a mobile home. I know you guys aren't doing too many of those out here. And then mortgages originators re, originated by lenders of uh, five or fewer mortgages in a year. So if you've got your the mom and pop folks or mom and dad giving kiddo a loan, we don't have to use these disclosures. Or if you, if any of you have ever um, done a reverse for purchase, have you ever been an agent on one of those deals? We'll still be using the old forms on those as well. Any questions? <laughs> All right, so this old one says um, August 1st. Of course, they've moved this, and uh, now it's October 3rd is the new start date. Um, we should have no more last minute surprises at the closing table, and you'll see why in a few minutes. And then we also have two new forms. So there's going to be no longer the truth and lending form and no settlement statement. These are going to be the forms that you're going to get. Your buyer is going to get a loan estimate from their loan officer. And then the closing form will be the closing disclosure. And this one you have is for the buyer only. The seller will actually get their own. So they can no longer see the terms of the, of the buyer's mortgage, which is nice. Yeah, it's not really none of their business. It's really none of their business. Right? Cash sale, we can still use the old settlement statement. Okay? So we'll go through those in a few minutes as well. Okay. So these replace the HUD one. They replace the HUD one and the truth and lending statement, and then that good faith estimate. So those three forms are actually going away. Okay, so the first form that we have, the loan estimate, replaces the truth and lending form or that uh, preliminary truth and lending form and the good faith estimate. So those won't, your buyer will not have those any longer. The lender or the loan officer must deliver that uh, loan estimate to your buyer within three days after they've taken the loan application. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> three days. After and then we must. And if they don't. Three days after the loan estimate. Right, three days after the loan application, the buyer should receive the loan estimate. And then further, the lender must wait seven more days after mailing that loan estimate to close. Now, we don't see too many of those quick closings anymore unless it's a cash deal. Uh, but again, it looks like they're gonna have to wait about 10 days before you could have a closing. I can't imagine that would happen, but um, let's see. 
There's a clip. This is uh, if you guys look, take a look at it. It's supposed to be clearer. Uh, it shows that clearer than the truth and lending statement, I guess, in a good faith estimate. Which it is. <laughs> so the you know first section you'll see your loan terms, projected payments, cost at closing. And when we get to the closing disclosure, you'll see that the buyer should be able to put this together and compare what was to told to them and what actually is. So that's how it's supposed to be. Judy. Ma'am. Now, the cost of closing details, like the services that you can shop for, mm -hmm. does the buyer, are they required to have those within three days after application so he can finish it? The lender? Most it's going to work the same way that it, it does now. They'll put just kind of estimates. On it. Yeah, they're going to put the estimates, but some estimates can change, some can't change. But those are ones that can change. Obviously. Yes, right. Some can't. Well, we haven't had a list of what can and cannot change. It says on B and C. Okay. You're, How um, do we know? And we're going to go through some okay. of these as well, but. Um, yeah, it says you can and cannot. And, and there's some other things that they may not have thought of, but you'll see. You'll have a, a clear definition in just a second. All right, so what does it mean to take an application? You know, because the loan officer has three days to deliver that loan estimate, what does that mean to take an application? So it's when the lender loan application receives at least six of the following things. The name of the borrower, the social income address, and the value of the property, or the estimated value of the property, and the estimated loan amount. So what's, once those things are compiled by law, uh, the loan officer should be giving a loan estimate out within three days. Yes, sir. I'm curious how they define value of property. I think it's just going to be an estimate of what you guys it's, like think it's going to be, or, or what the contract says, what, what offer you guys are going to make on it. Except for the cost of the credit report, the lender cannot collect any fees prior to providing the loan estimate. So no more taking that appraisal fee prior. So we're going to be wow. waiting three days to order an appraisal as well. Three days to order what? My guess is it'll be three days to order an appraisal. Because I, I don't imagine the loan officers will want to eat that cost if it, if it doesn't count. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the loan estimate must be delivered within three days of the receipt of those items that we just talked about, which we were saying. Um, then you must wait about seven days, or you must wait seven days um, after the, the delivery before a closing can, can... Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you do this application with one mortgage man, like the next day, can you go to another one and Absolutely. get the same thing, and then you can compare? Absolutely. That's, that's the thought behind it. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, and you have to wait three business days um, or deliver within three business days and wait seven business days before you can close. And this business day is different from another business day, which will be in a few slides down. So the business day is a day on which the creditors or the lenders' offices are open to the public for substantially all functions. And this is key for those lenders who are open on Saturday, because now they get to count that day as a business day. My guess, though, is because the penalties for violating any of these things are so high, they're going to probably just go with everybody else's business days, because it's, otherwise it's going to be a nightmare for them and all of us. You can um, waive that seven business day waiting period after that three days for, they say, a bona fide personal emergency. The commentators are saying that there really is no bona fide personal emergency, so I don't know why we wanted to tell you that. There really is a way to get around the 10 days, for, you know, three days and then the seven days. All right, so what does the loan estimate tell you? Page one, we've got our loan terms, projected payments, cost to close, and it's virtually the same as the closing disclosure, which your buyer will be getting at closing. Page two itemizes your closing cost, and then three tells your total payments over the five years in the APR, annual percentage rate. Okay. This is going to come within three days. This will be the loan estimate, which is supposed to be at, in your buyer's hands for residential property within three business days.
from the loan officer taking an application. Lots of software in for the, the lenders the to have to buy. Mm -hmm. In the buyer's hand. Mm -hmm. And email is considered a <clears throat> Unless, now mail, then you can go with the mailbox rule, which will get to as well. So it gets really confusing. <laughs> so, you know, Just hang in there. We're going to get there. It, and that's, <laughs> that might be a reason that when you, you have your in-house lender to use, you know, when you have somebody in here to use that person because they can hand deliver that disclosure. All right. Can the fees disclosed on the loan estimate change? Some can, some can't, and some can a little bit. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that depends. Some charges can't increase at all. There's a zero tolerance. Um, some can increase 10% and then there's some it doesn't matter. And then we'll go to the next one. <laughs> Things that can't change. Fees paid to the lender, fees paid to the mortgage broker, or an affiliate. Fees due to the affiliate or of either the broker or the lender. So we, if you guys are just, or your lender is disclosing our fees, we can't change those fees. So your in-house um, loan officer will know what our fees are. So we won't have to re-disclose those things. What happens if your estimate of your fee differs from the loan officer for any variety number of reasons? For most um, lawyers that you're going to use, closing attorneys, they're going to say, no, these are our fees. Period. These are our title insurance costs. And your, the loan officer will have to re-disclose the loan estimate. It's, but just if I get a copy of your estimate, that you have produced. The loan officers actually contact us and say, give us a, a fee breakdown. Mm -hmm. That's generally how it works in real life. And now they have three days to pull that along. They have three days, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they can change with another three days? <laughs> right. If the fees change that can't change, then they'll have to redisclose those things. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so true. Yeah, okay. So if you end up switching closing attorneys, like if you two days in are like, well, actually, we want to close with this attorney, this just has to be. It can be reissued. It's it just it can be reissued. That right. But then you do that. this. Then you have to wait the seven more days to close if you wanted to close. But right. this is at loan now, so it's potentially not going to be. And right, you okay. should be now doing it for thirty days, maybe forty five right. days. Okay. That's my thought anyway. <laughs> and these are only, this is only for applications taking beginning October 3rd. So all the applications that your buyers are putting in right now until October 2nd, we're using the old form. So your, these October 3rd changes, we may not even see them in closing for 30 to 45 days out. Okay. So Why maybe. It's not on a Saturday. What, is that a Saturday, October 3rd? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Probably to give us three more days. <laughs> not take an application. <laughs> All right. So transfer taxes can't uh, change on those, which they sh they should know. If you're doing Georgia loans, what it is, and an affiliated third party if the lender does not permit the consumer to shop. So some of those things that they might have, like a tax service fee, uh, just some things like I'm trying to think of some other things that they can do. All right, ten percent. So, seller side and mostly recording fees uh, can change by 10 percent third party services where the borrower is permitted to shop and i hear a lot of people are like um we want to shop around for our own title insurance we hear that mm -hmm. which we all follow the book rate so there's really no point in it um and then the other attorney has to also run title so generally we don't see this I, i've actually never seen it um survey pest inspection and if closing with someone other than our firm the attorney can actually increase their fees by 10% if they want it and still be good to go. Because of our partnership. Because we're affiliated. Okay. Yeah, let's get 10% more. <laughs> I, maybe they do that. I don't know. I'm sure some will. <laughs> and then these things can change. Um, if they, if we see all the time buyers choosing different title insurance, um, homeowners insurance rather, or they all of a sudden want to include their car in the in the premium HOA fees you see those surprises often where the seller forgot there was that initiation fee see, those? and then real estate commission so if we needed to put the y'all's brokerage fee on the buyer side that's still fine 
the 195. The 195. Or a commission for that matter. Or a commission if the buyer's paying your commission for the either a short sale or a yeah. Well, remember there are more there are more and more properties being listed where there's not a co-op commission being offered. So pay attention when you're showing properties so that you know you can inform, you know, you're not going to not show that property, but you need to inform your buyers what they're they're getting and what they're showing. Because if they think their commission is covered, but it's not, you need to know that going in, not as you sit down at the closing table. Like what? Okay. Like what? Any questions about the loan estimate? All right, the other form is the closing disclosure. This is the one that you guys will mostly be seeing. So I'm sure some of your buyers will show you this. So I'd like you to see that. But this is the one we're going to be handing out in closing. No more truth and lending statements, the final till, and no more settlement statements or HUD ones. Who provides it to the borrower? This form. We can do it. Um, I'm sure the lenders will have us send it out sometimes. But the lender is ultimately responsible for timely delivery. So there are huge fines for not doing this right. They may also be sending that out as well. It's my guess. Um, there is a different form for your sellers, as I mentioned earlier. So they'll have something similar. And there their charges can change and we don't have to provide this in a certain amount of time to the seller. So if we're already doing one side, we're going to do the other side. It's a little easier that so way. So does the lender contact the other agent, the seller's agent, if that's if you're representing the buyer, if we get this and produce the seller side as well? Well, we'll be producing, the, the attorney we'll be doing the forms. We'll probably be going back and forth with the lender like we do now. Right. And then they'll have the final one that then they'll give out to their buyer. We will be providing the one to the seller. Are you obligated to give that three days prior to Not to the seller. Not to the seller. But we would be doing, I mean, at our office, if you're right. doing, but we're, you're going to be doing both sides. You might as well do both. Okay. So we would be giving it out at the same time. Yes, ma'am. So since there is a fine with that, who gets the fine money? Who gets the fine money? <laughs> the government. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a question. There may yeah. be something. It may because be something for the buyer. But I don't know. With all the laws, and they're like, "Hey, I want my fine." I'm like, uh, "You talk to the government." <laughs> like, it's probably used to fund this whole um, all people that are doing the investigations and that sort of thing. I don't know if there's anything to the buyer. There may be. No. Retribution paid. That's the right word. Can this kind of thing disrupt the closing? Absolutely. We're coming to that as well. Gee, isn't the government wonderful? All right. When is this provided? The borrower must receive three uh, the three business days before. We don't have a closing any longer. It's called a consummation. Remember, we're being recorded. <laughs> consummation means closing. Consummation. The consolation don't go there. <laughs> and you'll see it's, it's duly defined underneath. It actually means the day the borrower is obligated to the lender, or what we like to call the closing. So they want to call it the consummation, though. I'll say this will generally be the closing date. And it, it actually may be a little bit different depending on if we have mail aways that arrive late and that sort of thing. But there's, there is no cl uh, clear. Um, I don't even know yet. They're not sure how those are going to work. Lenders are still like, we don't know what. So they're doing if it comes way. late, the closing is extended, right? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. Look, no clear guidance. That guidance was the word I was looking for. Yet on mailaways are signing early. So we'll figure that out. My guess is powers of attorney or attorney and facts will probably be sitting in more more often than we have mailaways. Will probably be a little easier. But that's probably no clear guidance on that yet as well. So we'll just wait. <laughs> But they're not talking about the funding time. Like they're not talking about when you get funding. You know, like we have a closing late Friday and it doesn't fund until Monday. Consummation is still Friday. Right, because the note was signed with that Friday's date. So gotcha. legally that's the date they became obligated to the lender. Okay. Obligate, I see that in marriage. Okay. Yeah, similar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the on this closing disclosure form, their business day is different from the loan estimate business day. That's what I'm saying. So there are two different meanings behind the business day. For this one, Saturdays are included. 
This is so, what? Uh, for this business closer. day, to get this to the um, buyer three days prior to closing, Saturdays are included. Okay. So, so a Monday close means a Thursday disclosure. Right. right. Well, the post office is up on Saturday. A lot of this stuff's going to be mail. Right. Now it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good we are counting Saturday for this one. So we'll just Well, your closing date would be then a different day. Because this is just when the buyer has to receive the closing disclosure form. So the closing date can still go with the way you guys have been ro rolling she's, with that. Is she's that talking about the special stip that we put in that auto extends any contingencies that you guys wrote for us? Yeah, we can't do that with this closing Well, but form. the contract doesn't address oh, okay. the delivery of this. So yeah, because right. it's not addressed yeah. in the contract, it's this that statement doesn't affect this timeline. We can't actually address it. Do you have changes on Saturday? You do a Monday and then move out to closing further. Three more days. Remember how we did Bank of America? Yeah, yeah. three more days. That nothing happens. No, yeah, you have. No, it didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> if, if these things change, and you'll see the things that change can um, require a new CDF, will then extend your closing date out again. So yeah. Does that not include anything? I'm sorry. The like complicated. Any changes? It depends. As always, everything in law depends. So, and Brett, so we just have to continue to do amendments to extend the closing date. Right. But would it have to be a bilateral no. or a unilateral? Well, if, if you've can. used the unilateral already, then you yeah, only have the option to do the. And supposedly, a it's supposed to be eight. It's eight. Days but remember, right now in the GAR forms, the contract seven. says eight, but the unilateral yeah. right to extend says seven. So you just draw a line through the seven or make it into an eight. And then do we have to initial it? No. Send it have to do a bilateral like amendment. Right. You just have to do a regular amendment to, to change closing date that's signed by all parties. And so again, as, as good practice, if you have one that gets pushed out three days because of this, it's probably a good idea if you represent the buyer to try and do that all parties sign an amendment to cl change closing dates rather than using your unilateral keep that your back. because you want to keep that. Okay. So, you know, that that would be my recommendation. Now, if you represent the seller, obviously. Although the, the seller is probably in the same predicament because if they're, unless they're, paying, they're buying the next house cash, they're, they're also be in the same dealing situation. with all this as well. Oh, right. This is a ripple of crazy on the It is crazy. crazy. This, this back to back closing, bad idea. It's getting worse. Like it, it's been bad for the last number of years. It's been challenging. <laughs> it's, well, it's gotten worse lately. But this change is going to make back to back closings even harder to pull off because the chances of getting a three day push on a close are pretty high. And so you got to be prepared that you're not going to be able to sell this house and walk across the hall and buy another one. It's just not likely going to happen. So the the sell buy concept, you're going to have to change the mentality of the sellers. They're going to have to have another process in place. So keep your stuff on the moving trucks. Like at least right. Each mover, put everything in. Mover, put everything in the stuff. truck. And, the and stay in a hotel for three days. Yeah. Put it I in mean, the pond. Any talk of a bridge loan? Yeah. Not with this. I haven't heard anything about that yet. So I mean, bridge, certainly would be bridge loans would be wouldn't be for the purchase of. I don't know how that would be. If it's a home equity line of credit, I don't know. So how it, it depends the nature of the loan, I think. But we haven't had any. Yeah, but it would not precipitate something like that with the knowledge that the person that's selling a house has already bought one three days out and then it could be extended even further. 
now there's... For the, for the people that, I guess, for the people who could actually get a bridge loan these days. Well, I mean, they don't exist. There are, there are, a, few, there are a few that we've seen. There are. There are. But there, there, there are very few people that we see doing Yeah, that. to qualify for that yeah. is a serious How challenge. You tell your new buyer to move in when you don't know when you can move out because you don't know when the next Right, is exactly. Right. Herein lies the problem. And, and that's the, the theory is at this whole hanging out until after closing or not moving until closing happens is going to be harder to pull off. They're going to have to be prepared to get out and have somewhere else to go temporarily. And I want to also kind of read exactly what Roz, the, the really smart lady at my office who writes all these letters, what she wrote about this. Um, so the definition of what constitutes a business day for receiving the CDF, the closing disclosure form, is different from the loan estimate, as what I mentioned. For the CDF, Saturday is considered a business day. Sundays and federal holidays are not business days uh, for either. The lender can deliver the CDF in person, so you really have to have a local person. It would be considered received at that point um, by regular mail or by email. So by regular mail, we have to use the mailbox rule. Mail, and that means that the buyer is perceived or believed to have received it three days after that goes in the mail. So once they get it three days, then they have three days to review it. So you're talking six days. And then from that, then you have to wait to do the closing. That, or you do the closing after the three days. Can I throw a wrench in here? Yes, please. They, on the news the other night, the new subdivisions in Fulton County are not going to have mailboxes and no mail service. I have heard that. So there's oh, yeah, no mailbox mail service. Oh, no mail service. service. It, was, it was on the news the other night. Well, they have to have a PO box, I guess. <laughs> okay. They'll have central boxes. Yeah, they're going to have a, like, like an God apartment, bless apartment building. building. But uh, with that mailbox rule or email, if there's evidence of actual receipt prior to the three business day presumption of delivery by mail, the lender can use the earlier date to begin. So are they going to send it just regularly? Are they going to do it certified? I, I mean, how, did the, how does the person who's supposed to be receiving it know no, when it was actually mailed? It, they don't, it doesn't matter for them. If you use the mailbox rule, okay. Three days after it's posted, the buyer received Assumed it. to have gotten it. Right. And then but they have three what days. What I'm saying is they don't know when it's been posted. Absolutely. So they don't know and I, I don't days. imagine anybody. There's not very many lenders, I think, using the mailbox rule. or Most people email. Most people email so, and ask for a return receipt saying, yes, I yeah. did receive it. I What's the timeline on the email? To do it? Yeah. I think it still is three the three-day mailbox rule. Unless so, they have a mechanism to, to capture acknowledgement of receipt. So if they if the buyer responds back, dude, I got it's the last loan I did. They made me do that. You just respond back yes, and say you yes. got it. Mm -hmm. And so then that sets the clock in motion for three days from there. Yeah. Okay. So that's just a little thought on that. I can't imagine anybody using the mail, the old mailbox anymore. But all right. So this form mirrors the loan estimate. So buyers can bump them up together and compare the two forms to make sure what they were told at the beginning is what is at closing. Um, page two still itemizes the closing costs, and then um, all, on all pages, costs are itemized separately and alphabetically. Okay. So they're not always going to be in the same order, depending on if there's an, an additional well, something oh, in yeah, there. So you really can't it's going to. It's not going to be line. It's not always going to be line three. <laughs> All right, so when is a revised closing disclosure form required? Upon significant changes, change in the APR, change in the loan product, addition of a prepayment penalty, which I have not seen in years, but there could be, I guess. Hope that doesn't come back. If those significant changes happen, the waiting period begins again, and that's a waiting period from when the buyer receives it. So if they're using the mailbox rule, it could be six more days out. Before we can do a closing. And then you still have to do the seven days after that, or no? No, not for that. Because this is the closing. CDF, not right. the LA. Okay. Yeah, you can close with that. Um, can waiting period be waived in only the bona fide significant personal hardship? So no, it can't be. <laughs> Bottom line, no. Commentators say virtually impossible. Um, the unilateral yes, right to extend um, the GAR contract changes to the eight days. So you should be able to, but keep it in your back pocket if you can, and use the 
plan went first. Well, there's an actual specific amendment to change closing date. Yeah. Oh, not the unilateral notice to change closing date. Right, right. There's a, there's a separate <laughs> just change closing date guard mm -hmm. exhibit. Okay. Not exhibit form. Oh, right, the only takeaways. Forms are clear. <laughs> about total sure. cost over the term of the loan. Um, have time to compare. The, your buyers have time to compare the cost, avoid closing surprises, and um, the amount of the increase estimated cost. And the estimated cost is now limited by law. Although kind of was before. All right, so I guess the biggest thing we need to talk about though is what we need to do with your contracts and your buyers and your sellers now to maybe eliminate some of the hardships and surprises. Um, I have heard the, the, the loan officers who do know these changes are happening October 3rd. Um, that they want to maybe get, be given at least 45 days to get the closings out. What do you mean the ones? I, yeah, I want to point out what she yeah. just said. Yeah, yeah but wait. <laughs> yeah, so, so in closings, you know, when I'm chit chatting, so the buyers and sellers sign really quickly and stuff. So, like, hey, are you ready for the trip? And they're like, oh. mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're changing the forms, they're like, I don't, I haven't heard about that yet. And I'm like, oh. so, so you know, and this, this was day. after August 1st. Because right. it was supposed to already be in effect. <laughs> so, so more important than ever, make sure that the buyer, you know, that buyer comes to you and says, well, you know, Jimmy's going to do my, I lives in Alabama and he knows all about Georgia loans. I closely of Jimmy, if he, he understands what's going on with the trade and, and just say things what's going on. Trip. Yeah. And then, you know, you want to ask the, the let, let the lender that now more than ever, the closing is just not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, if they don't do the paperwork right, they legally can't close. It's not like the old days where, oh, well, let's just all throw it together at the last minute and everybody will sign and it's fine. If they don't do it right, it pushes it out. Can you imagine if you represent a seller, if you have, if the other side comes to you and says, yeah, they forgot to give the CDF. And so um, we can't close when we're supposed to just because they didn't deliver it. It's what? You know, like that's not going to work. So I guess that brings up the point as the listing agent, you need to be making sure that the buyer did receive this and you do have prior that. to closing you have that right in the contract now by contract you can contact and get information from the, from the lender right is there any use it course to the lenders there is huge fines yeah, huge fines recourse on the part of the seller but the buyers at this moment in time they're going to be fined as soon as some governmental agency as opposed to now the seller is sitting here with their fingers up their nose. It's it's going to be it's going to be a normal breach if the buyer can't close by the closing date if no one agrees to extend those. I mean it's going to be the same thing. They're going to have a right to the earnest money. They have a right to sue. You know what whatever they do depending on whether they take the earnest money. It's, it's the same thing. It's just going to be harder to get to that point where you're. And all we have is all we have as the seller is that unilateral. I mean that's the only given extension in the contract is the unilateral. So once that's been used, which could potentially, I mean, based on if they didn't deliver the LE, you know, maybe they forgot to give them the LE and all of a sudden, you know, a week before closing, they realize, crap, we didn't do that one. We've got to do this one. They got some big problems. Then you're, you're more than eight days away from being able to close because they've got to deliver that one. The buyer's got to review it. They got seven days to wait to close, and then they have to deliver the the CDF. Yeah, yeah they can do that so, within four, four days after that. But then they have to, and then right. there are so, and that, so I would think that if you're representing a seller and the buyer says, you know what, we can probably close this in twenty days, I would be uh -uh. skeptical. Skeptical, whatever. <laughs> Afraid. I would be afraid of it. Yeah. What if, so, which has happened a couple of times to me, like let's say you're under contract and you your buyer has a problem, whether it's an appraisal or something with their approval process, and you need to switch lenders mid contract. All of this starts over. It all starts That's over. Okay. Okay. So they got to get a new LE. You got to wait seven days. Yes. So if you're if you're doing that very last minute, yeah, which we've been able to pull off right. in the past, it's not going to happen now. 
another thing to think about too, you know how we're doing walkthroughs sometimes the morning of closing or the yes. day before closing yeah. and the seller didn't do anything that they were supposed to do. So instead of that, of repairs, we're like, hey, let's just give some more closing costs or uh -huh. reduce the sales price. But that now changes the loan, right. which now means uh -huh. new closing disclosure. Which means the new three days. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing under the table, right? Exactly. That, That's what she said. <laughs> so it, it might be a good idea to go ahead and go and do a walkthrough a week and half and do two. I mean, you can do one, of course, prior to, but if the seller's not doing anything and you don't think they will, maybe you can go ahead and negotiate that prior. But if you've got 45 days to close, yeah, you can. Day. You just want to push them to do the cha do the correction yeah, repairs let's, 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 earlier in the process, right. not right. not two or three days yeah. before closing. You want it repairs ten days done, before closing. Or fourteen days prior. To close. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if not, then the new sales prices. And then at least you can get it. If a buyer comes with a lender already, how does that lender prove? That they have. I would be the probably making a little conversation and, and asking business. them when they're going to get that loan estimate. And I mean, eventually they they'll either be out of business because they won't be able to afford the cost. I've, I've been told that the the cost to like change their software amounts to hundreds of thousands of dollars for each. We're all ready to go up in here, though. <laughs> <laughs> that put a lot of little guys My out of business. <laughs> What's a good, concise question to ask the lenders as buyers are bringing them to us? We've not heard of them. Maybe they're even the big banks and stuff. What's a nice, concise, concise question that we need to ask them we'll, that will tell us definitively if they're ready or not? I would ask when the loan when the loan estimate's going out to your buyer. I mean, if they don't, really? again, they should know and say, well, of course, within three days if they're taking. I mean, we've already given it. You know, they made application this day. We have. We've already given it, and we should be able to close it with your new closing disclosure form. You know, I mean, just they should have some knowledge of it. But right now, some loan officers and lenders that I'm talking to, and they're the smaller folks, they don't know what it is. I think another one might be the um, with your mortgage company. Do you typically are you planning on doing the uh, CDFs yourself, or are you going to assign that to the closing attorneys to have them do it? Because if you ask them that question and they don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> then you're done. But if they say, oh, yeah, no, we're going to have the attorneys do that. Well, now, well, if we're closing with Trudy, we're good, right? But if we're closing with somebody else, yeah, well, maybe we need to make sure that they now have, now we now have to ask them questions to make sure they know what they're doing yeah, and they, they have everything. They also are having to change their software. So title companies and closing attorneys are, are having to have the new software so we can have loan estimates and our so, CDF spit out rather. Ask about the documents. Ask do they have, because we've done that in the past. I will tell you, we've had transactions where um, like out-of-state attorneys were supposed to be closing things and doing, it was challenging, um, non non traditional real estate attorneys closing things, which they can legally do as long as they have the ability to produce a HUD-1. And that was the question we asked them was, do you have the software and the ability to create a HUD-1? And in one case, they came back and said, uh, no. And we said, okay, then you can't close this. And then in another case, they said, yeah. So, you know, ask them, do they have the ability to create these forms? And what is their timeline for doing so? But if you're on the seller side, right. you you aren't going to see that, and so you're going to. But you should be asking, did your buyer get their LE? Is it safe to say that the big name brands are ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get emails all the time from our title companies about the different software programs they have. So yeah, the big guys and the really good guys around here. So you know, just. Uh, as the seller's agent, can we ask the lender or the buyer's agent for a copy of the loan estimate or no? I, I Just wouldn't. to show that there's proof of it. You know, I, I understand that they're separating it so we don't see certain things, but but is there a way to, right. like, if an agent's just like, yeah, they, they got it. I mean, I would think that they would not give it to you without the buyer's permission. Okay. Um, and if you're the buyer's agent, don't give it without the buyer's permission, yeah. um, even if you happen to have a copy of it, um, because it has, you know, it has their private information. I think that's actually a good thing that at closing, it's two separate forms. So the seller doesn't, 
get to stick their nose in and say, oh, wow, you know, you're only paying how much a month for my house? You know, like, you know, I mean, it just, uh, it's just not their business. As the selling agent, couldn't you compliment? You can, yeah, absolutely. Have you sent that to the Have you sent a mass requirement? But you just can't necessarily get a copy of it. Yeah. That's all. Then you could get it from the person actually sent it instead of word of mouth. Right. And I would, I would get that confirmation via email, right? not just a phone call yeah. because you want to have it in writing saying that oh yeah we did deliver that because you know sometimes stories change so can we create a special stoop <laughs> yeah. that says that um there will be some communication that this is done i, I guess you could i think the that's thing really that, very concerning but i mean <laughs> the contract <laughs> allows you to talk to <laughs> the lender so you have the ability yeah. to get that confirmation you just have to ask for it yeah, I mean, all you need but, is, is an email from the lender. You don't need to see a copy of it. You right. have an email from the lender. So buyer will provide seller with, um, uh, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, buyer's lender will provide seller within three business days of confirmation that, um, of delivery of the LE. Delivery of the LE, yeah. The LE. Yeah, the LE. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. If we're talking contract days, you know, think about it. So if you've got a buyer that comes in, like Trudy was saying, with 20 days close, well, then, yes, I'm going to want special steps in there that <laughs> prove to me that every one of these timelines is being hit, like, dead on, right? Because if, if it's a 45-day close, well, then, you know, I mean, you've got a little bit more leeway there. And so, you know, if the seller, the, the lender doesn't respond to you that day and it takes an extra day, that's not a huge deal. Why don't you just want to tighten up the amount of days that someone is allowed to make an application on your financing exhibit or your loan I exhibit? think that is definitely an impact is that you're going to pay very close attention to that loan application window, which we kind of ignore um, because it hasn't really meant that much in the past. Well, it means something it now. now. And so, you know, if, if they have five days to make loan application, but they're closing in 14 days, well, that's not really possible. I mean, if, not. if that happens, then there's three more days, and then they get time to review it. So right. now we're out. This may be we're out six plus seven, yeah. plus, plus we need another plus three seven. to do the CDF. Plus, yes. So, so what would you recommend yeah. some max days to put in a loan exhibit, three? I mean, I don't see a reason, unless there's a weird situation where it's a long, delayed closing, why wouldn't you be making loan application as soon as you get under contract? So two or three days should be more than enough, right? Absolutely. I mean, well, wouldn't you also be pre-approved? Pre yeah. yeah. The exactly. They right. just have to add that value of property right. because address, if you look well, back at, you know, and the address, and now all of a sudden they have to generate that application. They have to generate that LE. What if the loan um, exhibit comes, the finance exhibit comes in with more than one lender? Well, it's the same. It's the same situation now. You know, only one. You only need it from one. Right. But how do you know which one to follow up? I guess you follow up with both of them until somebody <laughs> responds. Yeah. Or if it doesn't come in with one at all, which is also very common because it's not required to put one in there. Um, you know, but it's more important than ever that you get that lender contact information so that you can talk to them. Anything else? Any other? So Are we done question. with the present? On this page that is summary of transactions, that looks like a... Um,